Good afternoon. It's a great afternoon. We're very excited to have you all here, all ages, all very many kinds of people here, so we're excited about that. Um, today is a very special day. It's the first day of our residency with the International Contemporary Ensemble. And if you don't know, our residency series means that we bring in some artists from elsewhere usually, or from the area, and they spend more or less a week with us. And what they do for the public is midday news, which this is, which is often sort of informal and collaborative, especially today, it's really special um, that way. And then they work with our classes and with our professors, and in this case it's Jenny Johnson, who's right there. They're, they're going to work with her class all afternoon and do some more collaborative things, and um, sometimes we have workshops and things like that. And then on Saturday night will be a concert, and this concert will be really unusual, I think, because in this case, they're going to use this space in ways that probably none of us have ever imagined they could. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with, and uh, their creative process will be happening all day tomorrow, so um, if you want to peek in, this is where it'll be happening. Um, so the International Contemporary Ensemble is a, uh, a large ensemble of which we have a contingent here from all over the place, I think. And um, they do work with immersive, um, influenced by the environment, mixed media, electronic, acoustic, um, you know, cross-disciplinary um, performance that includes music. And so therefore, here we are in the music department. Um, and we're very excited to have them here for the week. Today, I'm not going to say too much because I think Ross is going to say more and explain what they're going to do, but you should be prepared to participate, put it that way, all of you. So we hope that you will. And um, I do want to say that turn the noise on your cell phones off, but you can take pictures and stuff and post them. Right? They can, you can do all that. So they like it, um, which is unusual. Uh, what else? Let's see. The, our next concert is um, October 26th in the chapel, and that is an Estonian vocal ensemble. So if you want to know about that and more other things, you can put your emails on our email list, which we'll have outside in the lobby after this concert. And I just wanted to say that this concert in particular, this uh, week, is partially funded by the New England Foundation for the Arts Expeditions Program. And we're um, excited to have their support and thank you to the music department and our residency fund, which allows us to do things like this um, all year long. So with that, please help me welcome Ross Carr from the International Contemporary Arts. Hello, thank you so much for having us. My name is Ross, and you can call me Ross if you, we're gonna have some interactive components today, so if you get to talk to me, you can feel free to call me Ross. And we're very grateful to be here and to present an afternoon of interactive demonstrations focusing on the music making and philosophy of Pauline Oliveros. Who's heard of Pauline Oliveros before? Oh yeah, absolutely, yep, one, two, it's, she's, everybody knows who Pauline Oliveros is in this room. And she was a huge mentor for us. She was a, a teacher and a collaborator, and she's a composer. And she introduced us to all different types of ways of listening. And today we're going to focus on a piece of hers that she composed called Sound Listening. And we'll take the piece apart today. Instead of just performing it for you and having you watch and listen to it, we're going to unpack exactly how the piece is made, how it was composed, and ask for your help in composing it. It's a participatory event, and so we're looking forward to interacting with each of you on this project. First, I'd like to introduce my friends in the ensemble, the International Contemporary Ensemble. This is Lee Harris. She's a vocalist, and she plays an instrument called the theremin. Who's heard of the theremin before? Yes, so many. Well, we're going to have a whole special session up with the theremin, and maybe folks, a few of us will get to try it out. Next up is Nick Kofek. 
He's a lighting designer, and so to, on Saturday's concert, you'll see all sorts of special colorful lights that will be designed in a specific way to make an immersive experience. This is Dan LaBelle, guitarist, electric guitarist, and um, he'll be helping us with creating sounds on electric guitar today, but also plays acoustic guitar as well. And then composer Bergrun Schneider is here, who's from Iceland. Who's been to Iceland before? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, and she's coming to help us with a piece that involves light bulbs that help that uh, instigate sound, that create sound, that encourage musicians to play. So we're going to be making music with lots of different stimulus, with things that come from movie score soundtracks, with lights, with music boxes, and all with the thinking and philosophy of Pauline Oliveros. So I'm going to jump into that a little bit. And by the way, this is Carla Brown. She helps to run and manage the International Contemporary Ensemble and went to Wellesley. So that's our team today, and we'll add a few more folks for the Saturday concert. But I'm going to leave enough time at the end for questions, so you can, you can be sure of that. We'll have some interactive parts in the middle, but to start, I'd like to introduce you to some of the sounds we'll be using today, along with Pauline Alderos' philosophy. So Pauline Alderos was uh, only recently passed away in 2016, 85 years old, and she was a pioneer of electronic music and of a practice of listening that really thinks of the entire surroundings, every part of your environment. When you're inside, when you're outside, no matter where you are, you have the ability and opportunity to listen very deeply. So that's what we're gonna, that's the place we're gonna start today, is the idea that listening is not only something that you do in order to know what's happening around you, it's something you can do in order to really deeply understand the environment that you're in, and you can listen so actively that you can hear what's in this room, and maybe even what's beyond this room, if you listen carefully enough. So the first exercise that we're going to do together is a listening exercise, and it's the first part of the piece, sound listening. But instead of us making sounds that you listen to, we're going to listen to just this room, and to the sounds that come from around us, and I want to encourage you to listen first for five seconds and listen to only the sounds that come from within the, the immediate surroundings. Then take five seconds and listen to the whole room. And then take five seconds and listen to whatever you think is happening outside the room. Listen so far and listen so deeply that you can think about wind blowing through the trees or cars passing, traffic, all of the sounds of the environment. That's what we're going to bring into our brains. That's the starting place. Let's do that together. So I'm going to count to five, and then listen for five close, listen for five near, and listen for five seconds as far away as you can, in your imagination and elsewhere. Does that sound good? Yeah. OK. So we're going to close our eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so everybody listened very quietly. I'm extremely impressed because being quiet is the first opportunity to listen. And then from there, I think we heard some sounds. Who heard some sounds in that? Yeah, what did you hear? Some of these sounds. We'll take questions. 
questions at the end. We're going to have a whole session at the end for questions. Now we hear something new, right? Does anyone hear that? That's a little bit of the sound of the amplifier because this table is no ordinary table. It has special microphones on it that make it even louder than a regular table. They're touching the, the table directly. And we brought some very simple things that normally wouldn't be used for making music, but today we want to expand all of our understanding of what music is and how it's made and how we can listen to it. So who's who here seen a movie that might be kind of a scary movie? Yeah, most people have seen a scary movie. Sometimes the people who make a scary movie have a special job. They're, they're, they're sometimes the composers. They make sounds for the movie that should convey the emotions, convey the frightening parts of the movie. And there are people who make Foley. Who can tell me what Foley is? Yes, Foley. Do you have a sense of what Foley is? It close. Yes, there's that element of it. Anyone else have a thought? Okay, please. The name of your principal. It's also the name of a guy in the early 20th century named Jack Foley. Jack Foley created the industry of sound effects. So sound effects are called Foley. Foley could be something like, let's say you're walking on a gravel road. Let's say Mr. Principal Foley is walking on a gravel road. And you might need to hear that sound. Well, you don't necessarily record that sound in the shoot, in the movie shoot. Sometimes you add that sound later. So a lot of these sounds that we're going to show you come from that world of Foley sounds. So let me ask you this. I'm going to go off the microphone because I think you'll be able to hear me okay still.
This music box is very special in that we can make them together because instead of being a barrel of metal, it's a piece of paper with holes punched in it. And we just put it through this special music box device on the amplified table.
time for questions, because I know there were some questions earlier that we didn't get to. So I want to add five questions, or start five conversations, and it doesn't have to be to just me, we can ask anybody in our performing International Contemporary Ensemble. Okay, so, first question is going to come from this part of the room. It's a question over here. Yes, please. What's your question? So he was saying that when we were playing the music, 
They were listening and watching. People could watch the noise and see us performing. That's a good observation. Thank you for that. Who has the second question? Yes, please. How do we do the crank things? Um, these are called music box mechanisms. And you can buy them at some toy shops or order them on the internet. And basically, it's a bunch of little gears that turn the paper through like a belt. The, like, a, like at the grocery store when the, when, the, when the food is being moved along toward the cash register. It's kind of like that. And then, when the hole passes a note, it makes the sound because a little hammer is allowed to hit a little time. Kind of like plucking a guitar, but imagine that the guitar is moving gradually by like the grocery store conveyor belt. Who has the third question from this part of the room? I want to make sure everybody's sitting in the back. Yes, please, your question. Why was that so scary? I think that's a conversation. Who has a thought for why that was so scary? Some folks say it's not scary. That's an interesting observation as well. So it's actually probably that for some people it's scary, and for some people it's not. But you have a theory as to why it's scary? Please. Halloween is indeed coming up, so this may be one of the variables at play. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident of that. Who has another theory for why it sounded scary or why it wasn't scary? Yes, please. I don't know why it was scary because some people, but some people find uh, notes that were low, mm -hmm. some were high. Yep. That's right. So some people composed a melody. You can see, if you hold it up to the light, you can see that there's some low notes and some high notes. And when they come in sequence, that can sometimes be scary. Another reason is that this particular card, when you punch it, can use any of the notes on the piano, the, all the chromatic scale for the musicians in the audience. So it's not just like the white notes on the piano, but it's also the white and black notes together, the chromatic scale. Who has the third question? I think we've got a good theory about why it was or wasn't scary. Who has the third question from the zone? Yes, please, in the red coat. What's your question? Okay, that's a great point. I'll repeat it. I'll try to say your point back to everyone else. So when you're watching a scary movie, sometimes there's also music that accompanies it. And like watching, uh, walking on a, a scary roof and there might be a jump scare, right? So sometimes you need music sometimes like this to make it even more scary. Is that right? Okay. Who has the fourth question? In the back over here with hand up in the black jacket. He says that paper can't make music. But, hmm, maybe it's the combination of paper and metal that's making music. In this case, we're also adding an amplification. Is that a good theory? Yeah. Okay, good theory. Theory accepted. Okay, the last question. Who else has a question? Okay, yes, in the front row with the sweatshirt on. So some, some music boxes don't use paper, right? That's part of your question? Some music boxes have only one melody that they play. Um, and that, that one melody is, is punched into a metal cylinder, like a, let's see, kind of like, that's a good way to describe that. It's kind of like your bike wheel, you know? When you turn your bike wheel and then you coast, and it goes that sound. It's kind of like that, but instead of it just rubbing metal on metal, it's metal on like almost guitar strings, little tines. It's actually not unlike a tiny, tiny bit of this. Little tines that when you plug it, it makes a melody. That's basically what's happening. All right, I promise we have five questions, but I think we need a sixth question. So where's the sixth and final question? Because we need to number five too much here. Maybe we need to expand our boundaries a bit. Who has the sixth question? Yes, in the back. 
You have the glasses on. Did you have a question? What movie the noises are from? Well, we had someone suggest it sounded like Annabelle. I suggested it sounded like The Nightmare Before Christmas with Danny Elfman as the composer. But what other sound? Maybe it's animated movies, not just live action movies. What else? Who else has a thought for what movie that could sound like? Yeah, with the jacket. The Grinch, great suggestion. Yes, please. Um, you keep thinking. <laughs> Pennywise, yeah. Who else has a thought for what movie this summer? Yes, please. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, heard it hearing the guitar and the drum at the same time. Dan and I playing at the same time. Exactly. Yes, please. What was your thought on the movie? Kung Fu Panda? I could imagine some sounds like that in Kung Fu Panda. Maybe especially the, the wooden dowels on top of each other when there's like these rocks rolling or moving around at high speeds. Okay, that's the last of our questions, but you've all been excellent listeners. Thank you everyone <laughs> from all ages for coming and checking this out. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can send us a note. Thank you so much.